A market maker who writes call options in response to a customer's request is exposed to both delta and gamma. Delta is exposure to small movements in the stock price. Gamma is exposure to large movements in the stock price or volatility. The market maker typically will require two trades to fully hedge or neutralize the delta and gamma exposure, and I'll explain that now. My example here is similar to an example in John Hull's chapter 19 of the 10th edition of his book. My values are different because I've calculated delta and gamma per the option pricing model that's in this spreadsheet. So these values are realistic for my assumptions. And you can download the spreadsheet and change them if you like to get different delta and gamma values. But the situation is that we can imagine ourselves as the market maker. Our customer would like to purchase or buy call options. We want to fill that order as the market maker. And so we sell them. We're the counterparty who takes a short position by writing or selling at the money call options. And I've just decided to, to select that's 10,000. So as the market maker is a short position in call options, if you've watched the previous videos, my playlist, you know that we have both delta and gamma exposure. So there's detail around that, but here's how I would summarize that. If we have a short position in call options, our delta exposure means that we are exposed to small movements in the underlying stock price. Our gamma means that even if we are delta hedged, our gamma exposure means we are exposed to volatility or large jumps in the stock price. So delta is exposure to small movements, Gamma is exposure to large movements. Now, the, as the market maker, let's just say we want to completely neutralize our delta and gamma exposure. So fully hedge both delta and gamma. And that's where the following formula comes in handy. It's not actually explicitly noted in John Hall. This framework I got from Carol Alexander, her excellent book, uh, Market Risk Analysis. But the key idea here is just to be mindful of the distinction between what we'll call, what are called the percentage Greeks. That's right here. These are the per option Greeks and the position Greek. And the idea is that if we are neutralizing or fully hedging one of these Greeks, what we're really doing is zeroing out the position Greek. This distinction handles a lot of confusion I have found. And the formula is very simple. We just want to take the quantity of options and multiply it by the percentage Greek. Multiplying those will give us the position Greek. And here's the key thing. A long is a plus on quantity and a short is a minus. So we're plus or minus the quantity and we just want to make sure to get that right. So here in the initial transaction in the market, we're the market maker, we have sold 10,000 call options, you'll notice I have that in here as negative 10,000. With a, It could also be just a negative sign here, but I'm using that notation. Negative 10,000 call options, and each of those options, these at the money options, they have a percentage delta of 0.55. That's positive between 0 and 1, pretty close to 0.5. So just as a gut check, that does look like an at the money call option percentage delta and then the gamma the gammas are low uh, but necessarily positive for either a call or a put so that value looks good too but these are the percentage greeks percentage delta percentage gamma to get the position greek it's a simple multiplication being mindful that my short is a negative on quantity so i have negative 10000 multiplied by 0.55 gives me as the market maker, by filling this order with the customer, my position delta is negative 5,500, and my position gamma is negative 440, right? So that's why a call always has a percentage delta that's positive between 0 and 1, but the position delta 
can be positive or negative depending on whether we are long or short those options. So this is the initial exposure as the market maker. My negative delta here means that's my exposure to small movements in the price. Here's my exposure to large movements in the price. So the first trade is to neutralize the gamma. And the gamma is 400, negative 440. The position gamma is negative 440. And we could use actually any sort of option on the same underline. And here I'm just going to decide to use um, out of the money calls on the same underline. And so out of the money calls, you can see naturally have a percentage delta that's still positive but lower and a percentage gamma that's lower as well. So this first trade needs to neutralize the position gamma of negative 440. And right, that's pretty simple. It's that position gamma divided by my the percentage gamma of the option that I'm using to neutralize, except I'm going to put a negative there to get to get it to uh, to get the direction right. So that solves for 12,055 of these options because if I purchase or go along these options, 12,055 multiplied by the percentage gamma, 0 0.0365, equals a positive position gamma of 440. And over here in these columns, I'm just uh, keeping a cumulative track here. But you can see this trade does its job and neutralizes the gamma as reflected in this summation. Okay, however, these options do have a positive delta, and by buying 12,055, I added positive 3,255 position delta to my pre-existing negative 5,500 position delta, right? We wouldn't necessarily expect these to match or neutralize. They won't. So I have a residual, so to speak, negative 2,245 position delta after this first trade whose job was just to neutralize the gamma. Okay, that means one more trade is required. Cumulatively, I have I've hedged out my gamma exposure fully. All I have is the negative position delta. The easiest way to do that is to purchase shares, right? Because here are the percentage Greeks for the shares. Sometimes we don't even explicate, articulate them because they're so uh, obvious or intuitive. But a, a share, the underlying share, has a delta of one, right? It by definition or identity. And <clears throat> by virtue of the fact that the delta of a share is constant at one, right? Gamma is the rate of change of delta. It's gamma is zero. So a share naturally will can do the job here without um, of hedging out the delta. And you can see, I'll just, just to be consistent, I'll take that position delta and divide by the one, make sure I get the direction right. And you can see for the the third trade here, or really the second tr hedging trade, excuse me, <clears throat> I purchased 2,245 shares. That gives me a position delta of 2,245. And now cumulatively, I have zero position delta, zero position gamma. I have hedged out, fully hedged out my delta and gamma with these two trades. And again, just to summarize, I, as a market maker, I wrote these call options, creating negative position delta and gamma. So then I went to options on the same underline, purchased the necessary amount to hedge out fully the gamma exposure. And then finally, I purchased shares in order to handle the residual position delta that remained. So that the key, but the key there in my in my view is to just be mindful of the difference between the per option Greek and the per position Greek, and that we multiply the quantity by the per option Greek to get the position Greek. And being mindful of a short position as a negative and a long position as a positive. Just on the second sheet here, I have an example actually from Carol Alexander, just to show you because it gets uh, adds a level of complexity, but we don't need to depart 
from this basic idea that percentage Greek times quantity, quantity multiplied by percentage Greek is position Greek. But in this case, the market maker, let's say, goes short 500 options and there's delta gamma and vega because, of course, options will have vega as well, right? That's our sensitivity to changes in the implied volatility. So here, the market maker in filling that trade has negative uh, position delta gamma and vega. So the, this must be written call options as well. And now in this case, the first two trades are used to neutralize not just gamma, but gamma and vega simultaneously. And so we're solving for, we need a, that's an X. We need X number of this option and Y number of this option that will together as two trades neutralize my gamma and vega, right? We're going to have uh, two functions and two unknowns. So that's the added layer of complexity. And we could just notice here too that option three, I'm using actual numbers from Carol Alexander's book here. My only quibble is that these gammas are unrealistically high, right? Well, gamma is more like 0 0.02 than 0 0.2, but I think it's just to keep the uh, example easier to follow. And you, we could also notice option three, this negative delta 0.8, what does that signify? Well, that means this is a put. So what we need to do here is we have this this gamma is 0.1 for this option and the gamma is 0.3 for this option. So we need 0.1 uh, in terms of the gamma, 0.1 times x, 0.1 multiplied by x plus 0.3 multiplied by y. CI of quantity x multiplied by per option Greek plus quantity y multiplied by its per option gamma. If I add those together, what I want is I want to get a positive 100 gamma to full to exactly neutralize this negative 100 gamma. See, see how that works. And similarly for my vega, what do I want for vega? Well, my first option has 0.1 vega and I'm, I'm going to get X in quantity and I want to add that to 0.2 for my second trade its vega multiplied by its quantity and what do I want when I add those when I add these together here I want a positive 80 in position vega to fully neutralize and so I have two unknowns and two formulas and in this case very convenient I can just subtract the second from the first and to observe that 0.1y equals 20 so y equals 200, and then that'll also let me, um, if y equals 200, then this term here equals uh, 40, so this term here equals 40, so x equals 400, right? So that means, let's see, y equals 200 and x equals 400, and the point of solving for both of those is confirmed right here. Cumulatively, after these two options, if I purchase 400 of this option and 200 of this option, I will have neutralized my gamma and vega. And then, um, however, they each have their own deltas, so they introduce respectively positive 80 delta and negative 160 delta. So cumulatively, at this point, I have negative position delta, negative 380. And but I I want to trade that neutralizes the delta but doesn't introduce any new uh, distortions into gamma or vega and for that again I can use uh, shares and I and I can use exactly 380 shares purchase 380 shares and I finish um, with zero on position delta gamma and vega so that's just a a more elaborate example but shows you we don't we still we did not depart from this basic idea that quantity plus for a purchase minus for a short multiplied by the per option Greek that we call percentage Greek that's a multiplication equals our position Greek so if you enjoyed this tutorial please subscribe to the channel so you're notified of our updates thank you